he was the only one who was with me with him before he could fall for it. One of the worst moments for the mourning family of the New Jersey student who attended prom in a royal blue dress will be seeing it displayed for the final time. What was supposed to be a wonderful evening for the teenager turned into a nightmare where the shivers come down to your body. Background 16-year-old Brittany Gregory was from Brick Township, the largest town on the New Jersey shore. In addition to her parents, Brittany had five other siblings. Brittany was the youngest, but even at 16, she was wise beyond her years. She loved school and earned A grades as well. She desired to work as a forensic psychologist to solve crimes. The Disappearance Around 8 o'clock on July 11, 2004, Brittany vanished from existence. Brittany had reportedly been trying to find a ride to her lover John's place, according to her sister Brianna. She wanted to mend their relationship after they had a quarrel two days before. In the end, Brittany did leave the house and she never returned. Brianna went to the authority station on July 12th to file a missing persons report for her sister. Investigators Mark Byrne and Elliot Morgan were assigned the case by 4 o'clock that afternoon. Investigation begins. The detectives began by speaking with Brittany's neighbors, the family, and conducting a home search. Both Brittany's phone and cosmetics were still inside the house. It appeared as though she had simply vanished or been kidnapped. Brittany's 18-year-old boyfriend, John Fitzgerald, was disclosed to the police by Brianna. She claimed that despite finding that John had kissed another woman, Brittany had forgiven him and wanted to reconcile with him. John was contacted by the police, who requested that he visit the station. Soft-spoken John appeared horrified that Brittany was missing. The previous evening, when Brittany hung up on him, he claimed to have last spoken to her. He acknowledged that they had been arguing and said that he kissed another girl because he believed she had kissed a boy. When John was requested to get a polygraph, he responded that he would do so later. John was let go since there was no proof of his involvement. There were numerous dead ends and leads. The next target for the police was to question Brittany's pals. Her close-knit group of friends reported to the police that Brittany's family had a history of drug usage and that there were often visitors coming and going from the residence. In order to find out more, the cops visited Brittany's family again. The family mystery. Joe Dunn, Brittany's father, had an extended history of drug use. He had several pals, and shady characters frequently walked into and out of the residence, according to what her friends told investigators. When Brittany vanished, the police inquired about who was entering and leaving the home. They were given the name Tony by Brittany's sister, Bobby Joe. Tony and Brittany allegedly broke up because Tony was too comfortable with her, according to Bobby Joe. Tony had a defense when the authorities went to question him since he had been at home with another woman. Though not entirely free of suspicion, he was let go for the time being. The investigation dragged on until an informant provided them with details about a fresh suspect. The informant offered them the name of 38-year-old career criminal Jack Fuller, a friend of Brittany's father, Joe. The informant claimed that Jack had admitted to him that he injured his back while murdering a girl and digging in the sand. The informant was moved to come forward when they heard this and watched the news report about Brittany's disappearance. Operation Sting. The informant planned to meet Jack at a convenience store on July 16, 2004, while wearing a wire and with the police nearby. In the state of New Jersey, one individual could give permission to be recorded. Jack revealed that intended to murder someone else. However, he did not reveal anything about Brittany or the site of the murder. The new victim of Jack was a man named Tommy, who was present that evening and was aware that it was John who had seen Brittany for the last time. Tommy Long, another career criminal and Jack's childhood friend, was the Tommy Jack was referring to. Tommy had to be located by the police before Jack did. After installing surveillance at Tommy's, the police discovered that Jack had driven there after his meeting with the informant. The cops discovered Jack's automobile abandoned, but Jack did show up with a petrol can a short while later. He was taken into the police station after being detained on suspicion of Brittany's murder. Tommy Long was discovered alive and brought in for interrogation. The statement, Tommy initially declared he wouldn't speak. That is, until the police played the discussion, 
Jack had with the informant about how he was going to out Tommy. Tommy shared all of his knowledge with the cops. On July 11th, he claimed, he and Jack made the decision to visit Joe Dunn's while out driving. Jack stepped inside and informed Tommy that he would be dropping him off after a little while. Brittany boarded Jack's vehicle prior to their departure. When Jack was presented with the facts, he claimed that he had no idea what they were discussing. Furthermore, he requested for a lawyer. Another witness came forward as the police were trying to persuade Jack to confess. A woman reported Jack's kidnapping to the authorities, saying she was the one who knew most likely where he took Brittany. The woman had been an illegal drug user, and Jack promised to provide her an ongoing supply of drugs. However, after being detained in Jack's house for several months, the woman managed to flee. The woman claimed that Jack enjoyed getting high in Lakewood, New Jersey. The missing girl was found. The police sent a search squad to the area the woman had indicated approximately two weeks into Brittany's disappearance. When one searcher discovered an area with an arm protruding, the state police, several nearby police agencies including search dogs, all appeared at the scene. It was recognized to be a female body with the name Brittany written on a necklace. The 16-year-old honor student's body was reportedly discovered, buried in a shallow grave in a secluded and forested area off of Ridge Avenue in Lakewood. Based on information regarding the murder suspect Jack Fuller being reportedly fond of camping nearby, investigators had been looking in the region for more than a week. There were no hints on how Brittany might have died in that grave. The identity of the body was expected to be determined through an autopsy which was scheduled for Tuesday night. At the border of Monmouth and Ocean Counties, a densely forested area has been scoured by more than 100 persons every day. Three New Jersey K-9 policemen who had contributed by bringing their dogs to the search areas on their days off were responsible for finding Brittany's grave place. Brittany Gregory was last heard from when she asked her parents for a ride to her boyfriend's residence on July 11th. According to the prosecution, a witness spotted Brittany in Jack Fuller's car the night she vanished. She knew him well since she was Fuller's daughter, who also happened to be Brittany's sister's best friend. Around the time of the murder, Jack's car had also been discovered at the scene of the crime when a police spotted the automobile. Jack informed them that his dog had been missing. However, he was not further interrogated. Additionally, Jack's automobile had been sent in for examination, and Brittany's blood was discovered there. This was strong proof to have him arrested in addition to witnesses and the voice on the recording. The heartbreaking end. The 16-year-old victim had only asked for a ride that evening to her boyfriend's house, and she became irritated when Jack began using crack. When Brittany asked Jack to stop, he became enraged and began striking her. Jack stripped Brittany of her clothes and buried her after she was beaten to death. The family of Brittany doesn't accept Jack's version of events. They questioned the removal of her clothing prior to her burial, even though there were no overt indications of a sexual assault. It was not immediately known if Gregory had been sexually abused. The results of testing were to ascertain that will not be known for several weeks. The autopsy found that Gregory was murdered before she was laid to rest, however, it was unable to determine the exact moment of death, stated the Ocean County prosecutor. A recent order of protection from her father, according to Bobby Joe and other neighbors, was obtained by Cassie Fuller, who resides in Howell with her grandparents. Jack Fuller pleaded guilty for the murder of Brittany Gregory on October 18, 2005. He was given a 30-year prison term with no chance of parole. Brittany's alma mater, Brick Memorial High School established a forensics program in her honor in 2008. In her journal, Brittany expressed her desire to resolve crimes and assist people. The 16-year-old had to suffer such a horrific end only because she was so eager to see her boyfriend. Comment down your thoughts on this heartbreaking story of Brittany Gregory.